Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So you'll notice that in my previous video, video I talked again about the ratios of magnitudes, which came long before number. So I have told you in the past that geometric arithmetic was first, and geometric arithmetic is always 100% accurate. There are no approximations or half measures or uh, any errors in the calculation. So, for example, you could find uh, the exact value for pi divided by e, okay, which is really the measure of pi using e as a unit. I'll show you very quickly how to do that. So, step one is you choose a unit, this little green line. So, you can make this any length you like, but I've made it one. It doesn't have to be a particular length. But if you make it any other length, you have to scale the step two, which is pi. So if this was two, this would be two times pi, okay? And if this was a half, this would be pi over a half. The third step is to draw your E-line segment, okay? So now what we want is to measure pi using this line segment. It's very easy. We draw a circle around these three points like that. And if we extend this point over to the circumference here, that will be the answer. That will be the quotient. In other words, step five. And there you have it. Pi divided by E is this approximately this value here. It's not actually in geometry. We don't care about the numbers, but that would be the exact quotient. There's no error there. This little cyan line is the result of uh, pi measured by E or pi divided by E. Okay, so that's what happens in geometry. We use a physical unit, this physical unit here, and or parts of the physical unit. We don't use equal parts of it as we do in algebra. So that's where the problem in algebra comes up is, uh, is as follows. We have to find, divide both of these into the same Num not into the same number of equal parts, but into equal parts of the same length, okay, and then count them. So we'd have to divide pi and this line here, this line segment here, into equal parts, and then count the number of equal parts in order to be able to complete the measure. As we know, there is no such equal part for pi and e, okay? And we'll usually just have an approximation, which is what you see here, 1.15573. Now, so algebra uses the abstract unit and or equal parts of the abstract unit. Unlike geometry, which just uses the physical unit and or parts of the physical unit. Because we could just take this physical unit, count three times, one, two, three, and then this little bit, we put a compass here, and we just mark it out on the physical unit here, right? The compass here. And we've completed the measure. Now, uh, the way we do it in algebra and geometry differs, but algebra gets all its properties directly from geometry. And algebra is a generic measure. It's when we don't want to refer to diagrams anymore. We want to talk about them in terms of abstract numbers. So that's why algebra uses the abstract unit. Now these lines here don't have to be perpendicular as long as they cross and these four endpoints here are on the circumference of the circle and these lines must be straight. It doesn't matter how they are inclined. I, I did, I used perpendicular lines just to make it simpler but I think you understand that you don't have to do that now. So this is a way you can uh, say pi divided by, if you wanted to say this line segment here, multiplied by this line segment, then the result would be pi, okay? And you would have done this step slightly differently. You would have drawn the unit, then this line segment, then this line segment, put a circle around these three points, extend it, and that would be pi, okay? And likewise, you could say pi divided by this, line segment, this blue line segment here, will give you the number e. Pi divided by pi over e is e. So this is how we got numbers, by the way. This, so these, these were not 
numbers in the beginning. They were they were magnitudes. We, we think of these. We don't even associate numbers with these lines, because numbers associated with these lines in geometry is meaningless. Okay, we take the lengths and we just do the arithmetic operation, and it's always one hundred percent accurate. Unlike uh, algebra, and of course, to find the difference, let's say of this line segment here and this, we would put a compass on the blue one, and then subtract it from the pink one or whatever color this is, and the re remaining result would be the difference, okay? And if we wanted to add one here, we just append it here, and that would be the, the sum. So what I'm showing you here now is that in geometry, we have 100% precision, and this does not occur in algebra. So... This is how we got number. We got number by trying to measure uh, one line segment with another. Now, if, if you don't have this diagram in front of you, how would you explain to me this quotient, pi over e? You wouldn't be able to explain it if you didn't do exactly what I told you right now. You'd have to try and find an equal measure that goes into pi and e. And of course, there is no such measure, so you approximate. If you take one, then it will be 1, 2.7. All right, approximately 2.7. If you take one here, it will be 1, 2, 3, and a little bit, right? And here it will just be 1, and then this little bit here, which is 0.15573. So uh, that's the gist of the whole story behind how you got number. It's It's inevitably and intricately tied in with the measure of ratios, okay? So normally we wouldn't even write measure of pi e like this in geometry. We just write uh, this line. So let's get a pen. So we would write this, this line here like that. And then uh, e like this, right? Something like that and put the the ratio thing in the middle. Okay, that's what we would do in geometry. We don't even talk about the algebraic measure because algebra uses the abstract unit. Okay, so I hope that's cleared up some things for many people who are still struggling with these concepts. Of course, your math professors don't understand these things, nor do your teachers. That's why you don't know them. I'll place a link to a very short video that you should watch which demonstrates all these things beautifully and gives you a little bit more information. If you're not a raised subscriber, become one. Click like, tell your friends about it, tell your parents, tell everyone you know, and follow me on academia.edu. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.